to share some reflections from Pam Friesner, my Uncle Jim's longtime friend who couldn't be with us here today. From the Wayback Machine. I first heard of Jim from my dad and brother Jan when they were all when they all did scouts together in junior high. Later we crossed paths after school at Capper practicing after school sports. He practiced pole vaulting while the girls tennis team shared the tennis court. In ninth grade, he sat behind me in honors English and pulled the ribbon out of my hair, which I accommodatingly wore every day going forward. <laughs> Unfortunately, he also wrote in ink on a certain vest I had made, and that put him in the doghouse. In those winter days when we were too young to date or drive, he walked to my house on Friday nights to hang out in my basement until things grew too quiet and my mother called us upstairs for hot chocolate to warm him up for the walk back home, which he recalled later was a five-mile five uphill both ways in sub-freezing temperatures. By high school, we were separated by schedules and lifestyles and had only a couple of dates. But my junior year of college, I moved home to attend Washburn when my dad got his cancer diagnosis. Jim and I reconnected about the time of Lana and Kent's wedding, which they included me in as a soloist, and Jim was a groomsman. They also included us in a lovely April birthday evening, my 21st, where they had a fondue dinner, which was very hip. What was a very fun few months became a very hard year, and we went our separate ways until our 30th high school reunion when I saw Jim's name on the missing list, and I called his mother, Fran, for his contact information. He was in Washington State and discouraged at the diminishing returns of the car business and invited me to visit, which I faithfully faithfully did. This was the beginning of quite an adventure for both of us. He was the king of great escapes, and we visited so many beautiful places from Mount St. Helens to Crater Lake, seafood from the Oregon shore, and also enjoyed the rivers in the backyard surrounded by county forested park on one side and a state forest behind us with, wild with wildlife in the yard. Coyotes, foxes, eagles, beaver, and steelhead trout. It was unbeatable. His scouting skills and family hunting times gave him such a love for the outdoors, and he shared it all with me. We watched lumberjack competitions, fairs, floods that washed our canoe away, and later went and rented one from a master gardener who was 101. We enjoyed the varieties of figs she grew, which was across the Clackamas River from Bill Walton's former home. For those that don't know, he's a TV sportscaster and former basketball player. Uncle Jim was an avid reader. Then he did audiobooks. After my nightly massages of his tight muscles, he drifted on and off to sleep each night, listening to the classics, as well as military and mystery and history books. These books and sports were his main entertainment. We cheered on Gary Woodland, a local Kansas golfer, St. Louis Cardinals from his boyhood, K-State, my dad's a 1947 graduate, Pam's dad, and of course, KU basketball and the Royals and Kansas City Chiefs. But did you know that Jim invested his spiritual life, was invested in his spiritual life also? He participated in Bible study fellowship, asked Brooke and her boys. Weekly, most school years, which required searching the Bible, prayer, and answering questions. Due to his perfect attendance at BSF, Jim was asked to serve as a treasurer. He always attended church if we could go together. He even sang some, but not as loudly as your dad, he was quick to add. He would share and pray aloud at Bible class. We took turns praying at home. 
I did my best to encourage him to get honest by agreeing about some of his off-the-rail thoughts. We shared and loved frugal shopping bargains, my cooking, all of those Missouri and Kansas recipes we grew up with, his grilling, his car know-how, his gift giving, which was always flowers on my bed, his connections at church, and singing there too. His tech knowledge for all electronics, our Missouri roots and grandparents, our shared early experiences and reconnection after 30 years. Bible study fellowship lessons, my children travel to <coughs> speak of families and their children, my ring, our RV park time in the mountains, our 50th Topeka West High School reunion, our best family memories growing up, and our final mixing of some of our ashes together upon our death.